I want to help you tell the stories that you care about the most, and I want your stories to be amazing. My name is Jeff Barch. This is Story Greenlight. You're walking down the sidewalk. An unmarked van with no windows in the back pulls up. The driver rolls down the window and says, get in. What do you do? Nine out of 10 times you're gonna say, heck no, because most of the times the driver will be a stranger and you have no idea what that driver wants. What would it take for you to actually get in that van? What if the driver was someone that you knew? A neighbor or a coworker? What if the driver was your best friend? Well, of course you'd get in because you know them and you like them and because of that, you trust them. Knowing, liking, and trusting, that's a big deal especially if you have a story or a message that you're wanting to put out into the world and you want people to respond. So let's change the story here. I'm starting a YouTube channel. I believe I have valuable information to share to the right people, maybe to you. And I would prefer for it to actually be a real conversation, not just me blabbing in front of a camera. Now for that conversation to happen, there's gotta be people on the other end. They've gotta hang around and they've gotta do things like hitting the subscribe button and they've gotta leave comments. But hold up. Why on earth would you do that? Well, if you already know me, then there's a decent chance that you like me and you trust me enough to not take your time and attention and hack it up into little pieces and stuff it into the trunk of my car. But if you don't know me all that well, then you might not be so sure. And when you don't know someone, the number one way I know to change that is to tell a story. So if you don't know me, I would like to change that. Here's a part of my story. I was made in America, born in Australia. Mom was pregnant with me before we moved over, so that's why I happen to have two birth certificates. We moved back to the United States just before I turned four, lived mainly in the Midwest US, mainly in Iowa and South Dakota, so that's why I have no accent. When we moved back to the US, I shared a bedroom with my two older brothers, and I had this thing that I did every night. I had a whole list of songs that I sang. It drove my brothers nuts. My family was given an old piano, and I went up to that piano, started plunking out tunes on it, and I stopped singing at night, and my brothers were thrilled. I took piano lessons from kindergarten to 12th grade when I did a big fancy recital and got dressed up in a tuxedo and played big fancy pieces and uh, I play piano to this day. In elementary school, I far preferred books to people. I was reading Hemingway in sixth grade and learned the hard way that it, you don't make many friends on the playground when you use big fancy words. Sometime around fifth or sixth grade, someone gave me my first Casio keyboard, the kind that you can get at Radio Shack for like $49. And I loved that thing. And I started hooking it up to my brother's boom boxes and I started recording tracks and bouncing tracks back and forth. That took on a life of its own when I got into junior high and I got my first computer and my first synthesizer, hooked it up, did MIDI sequencing, spent hours and hours and hours and hours down in the basement arranging and composing and recording music. In high school, my art teacher said, Jeff, I think you should do a video. I'm like, okay, I'll do a video. The result of that first video was so boring, you could feel your brain cells dying, but I fell in love with the process because that's where everything came together, the picture and the sound and the music, I fell in love with it. I got into college and I double majored in Bible studies and music composition. There was also a very brief time when I majored in organ performance, but we won't talk about that. I spent my first two years of college working at a lumber yard in Omaha, Nebraska, packing semi-trucks by hand. That got old. I wanted to get back into TV and film stuff, the kind of things that I've been doing in high school, so I decided to get out of the Midwest weather and move to Los Angeles, where the weather is almost always amazing. I went to film school, and very quickly, I ran out of money, and I was like, okay, now what? Thankfully, I had worked my butt off when I was at film school and one of my film profs gave me a hookup for the contact who gave me my first internship. I went up to Hollywood and came in Friday and Sunday nights uh, for six months for free. I was promoted to the lead assistant editor on this show, uh, which was actually a show called Blind Date that had cartoons and thought bubbles popping up out of people's heads. And it ran the gamut between incredibly dumb and fall off your chair funny. A position opened up for a full-time night editor. I was given the shot and that's how I made my transition into editing. And I've been editing full-time ever since. 
Since then, I've cut for ABC, NBC, Apple, Universal, Disney, ESPN, MTV, and a whole bunch of others, too many to list here. My comments on editing and the entertainment industry have been featured in the USA Today, in Time Magazine, in the Associated Press, and in multiple textbooks. I love storytelling and editing so much, I literally wrote a book about it. It's called Edit Better, Hollywood Tested Strategies for Powerful Video Editing. So why am I telling you all this? Number one, because I love this stuff. The kid who spent hours and hours and hours reading books and playing with Legos and arranging and recording music, all that wraps up into what I do here every day in the storytelling capital of the world. Number two, far more people don't know me than people who do. This is an attempt to change that, to help you get to know me, maybe even like me, and to trust that I know what I'm talking about and that I genuinely do want to share the art of story and editing with you. That's the thing, telling a story and editing a video, are, they're things that take moments to learn but lifetimes to master. See, most folks who talk about editing, they talk about the technical stuff, how to press the buttons on the software and to make it do what you want it to do. But when it comes to the art, actually crafting a story that reaches into people's hearts and minds and makes them feel something or change their mind, that's a whole other thing. And most times you're on your own. That's what I love, and that's the stuff that I want to share to as many of the right people as humanly possible. I want to help you tell the stories that you care about the most, and I want your stories to be amazing. If that's something you're into, then I invite you to hit the subscribe button. It's time to get in the van. But instead of a creepy unmarked van, imagine it's a quarter million dollar Ferrari. And the cool thing, I'm not driving, you are.